Hey everyone, this is Christian and thanks for joining me. This is the analysis portion of Gadamin's six stroke roll with mustard. It's on page 29 of Steve Gad's Gadamin's book. Uh, the reason why I did it this way is because some people just want to hear me play and that's cool. So um, I, there's a version of this video, it's much shorter where I just play the exercise fast and then I play it slow. And if that's what you're looking for, I'll put the link to that one below so you can check it out. Now this video, like I said, is an analysis. And what I really thought would be cool, what I've really wanted to do actually for a while is just share my process for figuring out tough rhythms. And it's a thing that I call doing the math of the measure. And if you've followed my reading and rhythm series at all, I've mentioned it a few times. This is how it works in, in practicality, okay? So um, we're gonna start by cutting away and listening first uh, to me play. We're gonna play again anyway. So we'll listen to that first and then we'll get into the analysis. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so now let's get into the analysis of the first ending. Uh, and on screen I put now, I have a, um, a slideshow that I've created. And hopefully this works out, it's the first time I'm trying it. Um, what you'll notice is that I've written the, the first ending out here in Finale. And I did it that way because it makes it a little easier to manipulate and uh, to work with. Now, what we're gonna do here is, like I mentioned before, is that we're gonna do the math of the measure. That means figuring out where all these beats lie. And the, the goal of this is determining when a rhythm starts, what beat or what count. Where does the rhythm start? Or I guess if you're doing drum rolls, where does the drum roll end, right? So we're gonna use each rhythm's full value or duration to determine the next available rhythm. And I, I guess a little disclaimer here is that this might seem like a lot of steps, but really, uh, in, in reality, this is all kind of happening instantly as I just figure out the rhythm. Okay, so, but this is what's kind of going on behind the scenes in the old computer up here, okay? Uh, once we've figured out what rhythm, we, we kind of determine where we think it's gonna go, we can make sure the whole thing makes sense by making sure all the rhythms have their full value, that's uh, obviously a key point of this presentation, and does it match the time signature, and the time signature is so important because, um, you know, we can't have fewer or more beats in a measure. It all has to add up. And the reason why, and the, because it has to add up, that's why I call it doing the math. Get it? Math and adding. If it all works out, we repeat the process. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. Uh, the first thing I've done here to help me with the analysis is that I've removed the flams, accents, and rolls. Obviously, you can't do that if you got your sheet music, you're not removing anything. So you're ignoring those things because they don't apply to the rhythm. And when we've done that, we actually can now focus on this underlying bass rhythm. And we'll notice that the beaming is what's complicating uh, this piece of music. The beaming seems to not follow just quarter notes or half notes. It seems to be different. So uh, the goal of this whole thing is going to be figuring out what each of these rhythms are kind of despite what the beaming is saying. Okay. So now let's get into the process. This is the actual process. First, we confirm the time signature. We are in 4-4. That means very specific things. This is why it's important. I know it might seem like rehash, like I know, check the time signature. But the time signature has these rules. In this case, 4-4. Four, four. There are four quarter notes. There are eight eighth notes, 16 sixteenth notes, 32 thirty second notes, 64 sixty fourth notes, 128 hundred twenty eighth notes, 12 eighth note triplets. You get the point? There can be no more, no fewer than that. So once we start breaking into the rhythms, if things start looking funny, it means there's a problem. <laughs> if it doesn't add up, there's a mistake. Either I've made a mistake or you've made a mistake or, or there's actually a printing mistake. And that could happen too. I've definitely seen printing mistakes. So confirming the time signature as we go through this, keeping the time signature in mind is going to help us. It's a great crutch because when it adds up, we know we've got it right. 
Next, we're going to take note of the subdivisions. We're just going to pay attention to those subdivisions. That means what do we have here? It's eighth notes and sixteenth notes. Okay. And because we're working with eighth notes and sixteenth notes, we can kind of see it looks a little funky. We can keep in mind we're working with sixteenth note syncopation. That means we're probably looking at eighth notes that are appearing in places like the E's and the U's. Okay. So let's move on. What I've done now is I've added a 16th note grid below the music. Again, that's not something I do here, but it is going to help us visualize and see how this works. Okay. And this is why I like doing it in the computer is it's actually measured out really nicely and the rhythms line up where they belong and where they're played, which is really kind of sweet. So here we go. There's pretty much one step here analyze the music. Uh, and I do have a second point and that is to give each note its full value. That's a little asterisk. So here we go. Let's lean in and we'll go note for note. I just realized I haven't been looking at the camera straight and it's because I'm looking at myself over here. I'm pretty handsome guy, aren't I? Yeah. Back to the analysis. So the first note up is an eighth note and we know that because it has a single beam. Okay. I'm going to highlight that there. We have our single beam. Now with the 16th notes is actually, this is why I like this. It makes it easier. An eighth note you have to remember takes a, takes up two 16th notes. They're kind of equivalent. So an eighth note playing on one means we can't play on the E because we have to give the eighth note its full value. Okay. Imagine, I don't know. I feel like a kindergarten class. Everyone with me, give each note its full value. Thank you very much. Eighth note on one, give it its full value. It means you can't play on the E. That means the next available note, available rhythm is the and. So this idea of available rhythms, um, I put a little definition here. It's available rhythms are the next subdivision without a note already playing. So like I said, we can't really like overlap rhythms. You have to give them their full duration. So when you do that, mm, there's a time when that duration ends and then there's like a new available place to play. That's what I'm kind of getting at here. So an eighth note takes up two 16th notes. The next available place to play will be on the end of one. And you'll notice it's a 16th note. It has two beams. There's the top connecting beam and a smaller beam that's indicating 16th notes. Okay. So 16th note is only going to take up one 16th note worth of space. So the following available note would be on the, uh, of one, but I kind of glossed over something. We have this tie between beat one and the and of one, the tie means to add those durations together. You don't play the second note. You would know that if you watch the video on ties and dots from my reading and rhythm series. Okay. So we add those durations together. We play on the one. One E and, but we next play the next available note would be the, uh, okay. One E and, uh, but here we have some syncopation. It's an eighth note. We've got an eighth note on a weak beat on the, uh, so this eighth note we know has to take up two 16th notes. So that means we're playing on the, uh, but we're not playing on the two it's accounted for the next available note after that would be the E of two. And we have that. So the beaming is what, what Steve Gatt has actually done in the beaming is that he's beamed together three eighth notes. And the pattern of this measure is a three eighth note, three eighth note, and then two eighth note pattern, three, three, two. In the end, three plus three is six plus two is eight. We still have eight eighth notes and the math should work. Okay. So the first rhythm that we've looked at so far, this eighth note, three eighth note beaming is one E and a two E and. One E and a two E. Okay. Now this E is a 16th note. That means the next available note will be also a 16th note. It's the next note that's on an and, and it's also a 16th note. So we, we know it's short. The, the duration only lasts a 16th note. The next available note after that is the a uh of two. Okay. So we have and a uh, 16th note, eighth note. Again, the eighth note takes up two 16th notes in that duration. So we play on the, uh, we don't play on the three. The next available note is now the E of three. Again, another 16th note. So we have and a three E. And then the final note of that little, uh, beamed group is an eighth note. And that takes two 16th notes. So starting on the end of two, we have 
and a 3 e and. That eighth note carries over the a uh of three, so we can't play there. The next available place to put a note is on the four. So we do have a note on the four. Again, it's another 16th note, but it's also tied to the and of three. So we play on the and of three, and then we kind of think of it like, uh, you know, we hold for three 16th notes. Play the and of three, don't play the uh, we don't play the four because it's tied. The next available note will now be the E of four. Again, it's an eighth note, so that means it accounts for two 16th notes. So we play on the E, we don't play on the and, and then we have one available place left. That's the uh of four. It's the only place we can put a note, and what do you know, there's a 16th note on the uh of four. So the bass rhythm for that measure, if I don't mess it up, is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, that's the bass. Let's roll into the second measure. That was kind of long, but we can kind of pick up the pace, right? 16th note takes up one 16th note. Done. Cross it off. Eighth note takes up two 16th notes. Those get crossed off. Done. 16th note takes up a 16th note. That's done. That's the first beat. One E and a. Uh. Great. Beat two starts with an a eighth note with a tie to a 16th, right? We can start truncating this. This is what I'm talking about. Like it becomes part of a flow. A tied eighth note tied to a sixteenth is worth three sixteenths. So we have two E and covered. The next available place is the uh of two. And it's an eighth note. So that also counts for two sixteenth notes. So one E and a, uh, or I'm sorry, it would be two. Two E and a, uh, three. We don't play on three. The next available is an E. There's a sixteenth note there, E. And then we have an eighth note on the and of three. That's all we got for beat three. So that whole measure so far is one E and a two E and a three E and, and then beat four is four 16th notes, four E and a. Uh. That's the whole thing right there. So next, I'm going to overlay the original music. As you see here, I got my drum pad. I'll count out loud and I'll play it. And uh, remember, we want to play it slow for accuracy. So here we go. One E and a two E and a three and go. And one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and four E and a one. Again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Okay, great. So now we're going to take the next step. Again, we're going to tr we're trying to get closer to how I actually do this, which is when I sit with the music, I just go, okay, eighth note is that, and I just kind of work my way through it. So in this case, we're looking at the second ending now up on screen. Again, we want to give each note its full value, but we ignore the accents, flams, and rolls just to get the bass rhythm. Okay, but. I'm leaving the music as is because we have to start internalizing some of these things. We're also going to move a lot faster. So let's do the analysis note by note. Here we go. We're starting with a quarter note. That's beat one. All of beat one is covered. Done. Beat two, we have an eighth note. Okay, so that covers half of beat two. The two and the E we know is covered. The next available place to play is the and of two. And there we go. We have a 16th note. All of that is tied. So that means you play one, one E and two E and. All of that is covered by one hit because of the ties. So the next available place to play is the uh of two. And again, it's an eighth note. This time it's a roll. So we also have to think of this. When we're doing these rolls, we're not just playing the uh and then there's silence. We're actually rolling through the duration. So we're playing on the uh, it's an eighth note. We roll through two 16th notes to the E of three, two E and a uh, three E, something like that, okay? The next available spot after that E is the and of three. It's a 16th note again, so it takes up one spot. Then we have the uh of three. It's an eighth note, takes up two spots, the uh and the four. The next available is the E of four. One 16th note, takes up one spot. Then we have an eighth note on the and of four. That finishes out the measure. Again, look, it, it lines up nicely. And so we know that the measures are written correctly and that we're coming up with the right answers. The and of four is tied to one, so we don't play on one, but there's a 16th note on one to account for that shorter duration. That means we play again on the E of one with an eighth note. 
So we're rolling through E and and. E and uh, and we stop on the uh. E and uh. Okay? Stop on the uh. Now we have two is the next available place to play. Two, it's a 16th note. Great. E is an eighth note. That covers the E and the and. So two, E and, right? And then we have the uh. So two, E and uh. Great. Next beat three, we have an eighth note. Okay? So three, E, covered. Next place to play, next place to play is the and of three, and it's a 16th note, so one 16th note comes off. After that means we have an uh. The uh is an eighth note, so three e and uh. Four is covered because the uh is an eighth note. That means the next available place to play is the e. It's a 16th note, only one slot gets covered. And then we have the and of four playing on the and position. It takes up the last two 16th notes, and that measure adds up. Now, I do have something to point out in this measure in particular is we have drags in beats three and four. And at tempo, it kind of makes more sense to put those drags directly on the E uh, in both cases. Actually, they're both on the E and play them as 32nd notes. So nice and slow, you would get something like this. Three, E, and, uh, four, E, and. Okay, I'm sorry, the, the four is on the four, not the E. So you've got a 30 second note on the E and then a 30 second note on the four, right? So three, E, and, uh, four, E, and. 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 Okay? That's, some, that's a little... Would you call it? I guess it changes the rhythm a little bit, but it's more of a performance thing. So there you have it. That's the whole presentation. My battery is dying, so I'm trying to get through this. And I'm also trying to stop looking at that screen, but man, I am just so handsome. I can't help it. <laughs> so vain. Um, so there you go. That's the whole thing. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe. Um, you know, my website has more lessons at christianjohnsondrums.com. Also put a lesson scheduler up there. So if you're interested in private lessons with me, like real time on the internet or something, like using Zoom, uh, you can sign up there. You can see my whole calendar. You can pick your lesson time and how long you want it to go and actually pay through the website. The whole thing is available at christianjohnsondrums.com. Um, let me think, is there anything else? I think that's it. I think that's it. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.